So let's take a look at the 2.5D workflows that Disguise has within our latest versions of the software. So you can see here a relatively typical virtual production setup. I've got a curved LED screen and I've got a camera pointing at that LED screen. And we can see our camera's view here. We can see everything looking as we would expect it to. With 2.5D, what we enable you to do is take plates that have been prepped for a 2.5D workflow, and instead of just playing them on the LED screen through a mapping, as you would be used to with Disguise, you can actually play them and reproject them into the LED screen, which allows you to create perspective and denial of perspective effects, even when working with flat 2D content. The way that you do this is, first of all, by creating some surfaces to host the content within. I'm going to create those as projection surfaces. And the reason I'm going to do that is that projection surfaces in disguise support alpha as a background. If I don't need alpha, I can also create these as LED screens. Or if I don't need dynamic textures, I can also use props, which are more performant. But I'm going to create a surface. And the first surface I'm going to create is just my background surface and that background surface we're going to use to host um the far distant content inside our inside our space now what we need to do is we need to set up a spatial relationship between this screen and the the world that the camera and uh, led screen exist within so i'm going to scale this up i'm going to make it uh, 20 meters wide i'm going to make it uh, 10 meters tall I'm going to put it five meters high so it's sitting on the horizon and I'm going to move it all the way back to minus 20 meters. So it's sitting way behind the LED screen like that. And now I can use a video layer to map content onto it. So I can map a, uh, say, a set of clouds onto it. And that's using just the direct map to that surface. Now this is not done. This is not 2.5D. This is just content on a projection surface at the moment. What we'll do is we'll um, layer this up. We'll put a couple more content layers in, and then we'll start to play around with making it 2.5D. So I'm just going to say background content, and then I'm going to duplicate that surface. And my second surface, I'm going to say midground surface, and I'll move it maybe uh, 10 meters so it's in the middle. And on this one, because it's going to have alpha content, I'm going to go into the appearance and change the screen background to transparent and the blend mode to alpha. So now the screen disappears inside the disguise stage until we start putting content onto it. So I can make a midground content layer, change my mapping to the midground surface, and choose my midground clip, which in my case is this one here. Um, I'm going to match the resolution and aspect ratio of that clip um, just to make sure that my midground surface is uh, making best use of the pixels on that clip, like that. Um, and that's now sitting quite nicely in the midground of my scene. And you can see already that those two elements are now separated, and I'm getting, even from my visualizer camera, a sort of uh, perspective effect where the clouds are moving separately from the buildings, which is what we want. And this uh, this is just a still image, but this could also be a prepped plate with alpha in it, or we could be using a mask and um, multiplying the mask through the content. Uh, now let's just do a foreground layer as well so that we can do three le levels. So I'll add my foreground surface and I'll move that to two meters so it's kind of really far forward and take this content layer, duplicate that, and change the mapping to the foreground and change my content to the foreground as well. And that's inherited the, um, the resolutions that I've put into the, into the content there. And we can now see the foreground layer is nicely uh, sitting there, kind of intersecting the LED screen. Now that's all fine. At the moment, my screens are there. They're doing exactly what we want them to, but they are, are just screens, but they're not actually generating any content from my LED screen. They're just looking pretty in the visualizer. 
The way that we make them uh, do something more than that is by changing a property on the screens called the render layer. And the render layer was added a few versions ago, and by default, it's set to on stage, which means it renders on the stage, just like a normal screen. We can change that to MR backplate, and we can do that on all of our surfaces. And in doing so, we end up with this screen totally disappearing in the visualizer. But that's fine because we're going to make them reappear through a stage render layer. Now, before I create my stage render layer, I'm going to create an MR set, which you would normally have in your um, in your virtual production setup anyway. That's how we do calibration and various other components of the workflow. Um, and now I can use the stage render layer and I can map to the MR set backplate from the various surfaces that we had there. And that's going to pick up and as soon as I activate the MR set by opening the camera and moving it, we get a perspective projection from that camera viewpoint of the plates and their interactions. Now it looks like my plates are sitting a little bit too high. So I can just open up my surfaces, multi-select them, and I can, using a multi-selection in here, I can change the height of all of them together to bring them down. And if we open up the stage render layer, I also maybe need to increase the size of my background so that it properly fills the, uh, the, the view of the camera. So to do that, I can just change the scale on my background surface. So single select that background surface. And let's make this one, let's double it. Double its height as well, so it fills the whole area there. And now we have the clouds filling the whole frame. Okay, we've got a little bit of uh, edging on on the um, on the midground, so I could uh, offset that one if I wanted to to the left to make sure that it's sitting nicely. And I can play around with the composition of this just by moving the individual screens inside the visualizer. We can also use the widgets here to do that and uh, manipulate the scene until we get the composition looking right the way that we want it to. And this all works in with our camera tracking, so we get a parallax between the foreground elements and the midground elements, and then the midground and the background. And you see as I move that they all sort of track and interact correctly. So this is a really powerful workflow. Here we're just using flat rectangles to represent those plates because it's a, it's a flat uh, camera projection. But if we had a more complex um, set of geometry, we could also start to change the meshes that we're using here and reproject onto those meshes as well. So I hope you like the 2.5D workflow. Uh, I believe it's an incredibly powerful part of the workflow. One last little trick we've got, of course, with disguise is because uh, we can manipulate the content in various different ways, I can also leverage things like real-time engines to manipulate these stills. So for example, the water in the front of this frame I can apply a system called Notch, which is a real-time content generation tool. And I can place that onto my foreground layer here. And then I can create a water ripple, which actually loads the foreground content in and ripples according to um, the speed that I define here. And now I can animate that still to also create motion in the scene. Now that's just a very simplistic version with some aesthetic work and some uh, content manipulation. I'm sure we could uh, we could make this look a whole lot better, but hopefully you get the idea. This is an incredibly diverse and powerful workflow. So here's our final shot, and you can see a really nice parallax between the background, the foreground, and the midground. And we can dolly around. We can play however we like, and everything sits in the right. I hope you like it. Do let us know if you've got questions.